Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and this fellow is made out of plaster cloth with some additional uh, little frills and some smoothing off and details made with Magic Sculpt. This is a epoxy clay that's very similar to epoxy sculpt, except that in my experience, this actually gives you a lot more working time, so it's easier for me to use. So I'll show you how this was done, and hopefully you'll be able to use some of these ideas in your own work. I started out with a photograph of a horny toad. That's what we used to call him when I was a kid. It's really a lizard, not a toad, of course. I cut some cardboard pieces just to make sure that those frills ended up being somewhat symmetrical. I taped them on and then held them on even more firmly with a little bit of the WED clay. It's a wet clay and you'd be better off using an oil-based clay if you have some. Uh, it'd be an awful lot easier to get it out of the plaster cloth. Uh, once you're done. I also started out with the basic shapes of my lizard but in the end it changed a lot. The one thing I had to be really careful of was to not make those little wing things uh, so th narrow, so skinny, that I wouldn't be able to pull the clay out. Whether you're using wet clay or oil-based clay, you can't leave any clay on the inside of your plaster cloth once it's done. I did make the horns with aluminum foil for that reason. I wouldn't be able to get the clay out of those long uh, tips of the of the horns. When the clay was still wet, I went ahead and cut my plaster cloth into little pieces. I got some warm water. I actually did another experiment. I added some concrete bonding adhesive to that warm water. It's not something that is normally done. I also am using some plastic gloves because uh, the plaster is really drying to the skin. And then it was time to start adding the plaster cloth. You, you kind of have a balancing act here. You need to go quickly so that you can get the plaster cloth in the place where you want it and smooth down really well before it starts to get hard. It does start to get hard the minute the water hits it. On the other hand, you have to go kind of slowly because you don't want to miss any important parts. It's kind of one of those things where you have to just kind of figure out your own rhythm. You'll want to have at least two layers throughout. I found out after I was taking it off that I did miss a couple of areas where there was really only one layer of plaster cloth and it really isn't strong enough to be taken off of the form without distorting the, the shape of your plaster cloth. So make sure that you get uh, enough on there so that it's strong. Sometimes you'll need to use a, uh, a sculpting tool so that you can push the plaster cloth into the clay if it isn't uh, keeping the the detail like you wanted it to. It will harden within just a few minutes but it will take at least overnight to completely dry. In about 24 hours you'll be able to pull the plaster cloth off the clay. You want to be really careful when you do that. Uh, even though the plaster cloth has cured for quite some time it's still somewhat fragile especially if like I did you missed a couple of spots and only got one layer. Um, I pulled it off of the head and then it, it was time to start pulling the clay out of the inside. Definitely would have been easier if I had used a soft oil-based clay with a Vaseline release on it. It should have just pulled out pretty much in one piece, but because I used the WED clay, which I actually like using just because it's really fun for me to sculpt with, but it, it does make it difficult to get it out of the uh, plaster cloth. Then I just added one more layer of plaster cloth on the inside of the piece. It cleaned it up and it made it an awful lot stronger without taking out any detail from the front. I trimmed the edges really nice and I also cut a few bumps off of the horns so that it didn't really belong there. And then I got out my Magic Sculpt, my two parts of it, and I also got out my gloves again. You need two pieces of your Magic Sculpt, one from each uh, of the containers, and they need to be the same size. And then you start uh, squishing them together, kind of folding them over and um, pressing them and kneading them until they're a uniform color all the way through. It's got to be all mixed up really good. 
and then you get to start playing with it. You can make really, really thin pieces. If you uh, dampen your fingers just a little bit, it really helps. And I'm, I'm just placing them right over the eyes right now just to smooth off those eyeballs. The Magic Sculpt will start to harden just as soon as you mix it together, but it stays workable for quite a long time. You can smooth it off uh, with a dampened finger for a little while. Uh, after it starts changing, and this, this does take maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, you'll notice that it starts thickening up to the point where it isn't really as uh, sticky anymore so it's it's a little bit harder to push it against the plaster cloth and get it to uh, attach itself so that you know for sure that it's going to stay there you can do it though just uh, push a little bit harder it's also there's going to be a come a time when if you do add the water uh, it's not going to help. It's actually going to make it almost impossible to stick your clay onto the plaster. It, it, there's just a um, changes that happening constantly to it and you need to be really aware of how it's working and kind of adjust your working um, methods to the way the clay is working at the time you're working with it. You can continue to work it even after it's started to harden up quite a bit. You can still work it really nicely with some tools and even after that, after it gets completely hard, although I haven't tried this yet, I do know that you can carve it with some sharp tools or a Dremel uh, tool. When the clay is still soft enough, you can texture it with uh, burlap or fabric or anything that you find in your junk drawer. Um, you can smooth it off, as I said, with a damp finger. You can add new clay to old clay and smooth it out on the edges so that it all matches. And then, just as another experiment, I wanted to see if I could texture it enough so that I could do a hybrid sculpture using some of the uh, plaster cloth still showing and I tried texturing the the um, the clay itself with a piece of plaster cloth that actually seemed to work and then in order to make those edges a little bit less conspicuous I added a couple of random bumps since this was just an experiment I kept playing with it to see what it would do and I'm, I'm really quite happy with it now obviously this fellow isn't quite finished, that's why I keep trying to just show you this one side of it. Um, it's probably not going to get finished for a while, I'll be putting this back on the shelf because right in the middle of, of making this yesterday, the Speedy Delivery Guys brought me a product that I'm really hoping will help me make permanent outdoor sculptures. So I'm going to be working on that. When I do finish this fellow, and I do hope to do it because I think the character has a lot going for it. But when I do that, I'll get a can of spray primer, um, give it a good spray, and then paint it with acrylic paints, probably using the same colors that you find in one of those horny toads. I think it'll come out pretty nice. Now, in the meantime, if you're interested in the Magic Sculpt and you'd like to see exactly what you can do with it, there is a video out on the Stan Winston School of Video Arts that um, the fellow makes a mask with it that looks almost photorealistic. It's just amazing. I'll leave a, a link to it down below. He doesn't use Magic Sculpt over plaster cloth, so his masks are a lot more expensive than this. And I'm also hoping you don't have a heart attack when you see how much they charge you to watch the video. But if you do watch it, you can see exactly uh, how finely detailed you can get with this stuff. It, it's really an um, amazing product. Now, since it's almost Halloween, be sure to pick up your copy of my book on how to make masks using paper mache. And stay tuned to this channel so that you can watch the upcoming videos on my experiments with outdoor sculptures. And come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. Thanks for watching.